Europe's tougher controls. European ministers are meeting in Amsterdam trying to come up with ways of stemming the unending flow of refugees and migrants. It's the single issue overshadowing all of Europe and the debate in Britain over whether to stay or leave the EU. So how tough will it be for David Cameron when he sits around the table with his European counterparts to renegotiate Britain's membership? Well, a group of former politicians from around Europe are in London today taking part in a war game which imagines how those talks might go. Our political editor, Gary Gibbon, went along. Europe's interior ministers meeting in Amsterdam today. They told Greece it had to do more to control the refugee crisis. Some even threatened to have Greece excluded from the passport-free travel zone. In London, old regulars from the EU touring show of meetings were taking part in a war game simulation of the British negotiation of membership terms. Former Foreign Secretary Sir Malcolm Rifkind played David Cameron. So what we are seeking for Britain, or for any other country that wants it as well, but certainly for Britain, is a clarification that committing yourself to ever closer union of the peoples of Europe, we are not committing, we, we do not have an obligation to transfer national sovereignty. One of the easier British demands, an exemption from ever closer union, already conceded, so, uh, he was told. John, it was deemed to be the most difficult question. It has been solved. I think this <laughs> clarification we can go home. will happen. But, but Weekend I, reports I will, that Britain I, I was boasting it had won a permanent one. handbrake on EU measures it didn't like it was mocked as ridiculous. This is confusing, this is illegal, this is not effective. This is um, a good, good friend of always asking me, um, um, uh, have you drunk too much, Stefan, if I make a, a, a too, cr too crazy proposal? This is absolutely crazy. If I want Halfway through the day, they imagined an outvote had happened. Negotiations on Britain's exit terms were starting. There was a change of Prime Minister, as many think there would be in real life. I hope that we can move forward to discussions without uh, acrimony in a constructive way. I don't doubt it will be a difficult negotiation. The best uh, solution that we can see would be a comprehensive free trade uh, agreement, uh, in some ways similar to that seen between Canada uh, and the uh, EU. You have discarded the European Economic Area or the, the Swiss agreement, but you don't want that. You want a special, better one that just takes the best of the clear bilateral trade agreements with some perks. But frankly, if you want access to the internal market, I think that you will understand first that this, this will create reactions by the spare parts producers. Brexit is something which does, as we all know, does not only affect you, but affects our electorate. And this um, proposal, which is not on, on the table, which I would call the cherry-picking proposal after, after torturing uh, uh, us uh, over months, is not acceptable. In Downing Street, David Cameron was hearing the Irish Prime Minister, Enda Kenny, plead with Britain not to leave the EU. His predecessor from two decades ago said Ireland would be hurt more than anyone else in Europe by Brexit. As far as Ireland is concerned, uh, I want to make it clear that this is an absolutely devastating decision that Britain has taken. Uh, we regard it as an unfriendly act. Yeah. The temperature almost uh, dropped I in the room that, through the Brexit session, each country outlining how their electorates wouldn't let them give Britain a cosy deal. You are obliging us, all the European Union, to spend money, energies, a big, big investment in trying to arrange, and that will take years and years, the consequences of divorce. And it is in the vital interest of Poland that the European Union remains cohesive. So that uh, and, uh, other countries which would like to emulate what Britain did would be deterred. And we are very much for the deterrence because we are very much for the cohesion of the European Union and we would never support any agreement which would be better than the one for Norway or Switzerland. I thought it was very revealing what, and revealing about the psychology of this meeting, what our 
Polish colleague said, you mustn't be too generous because others might follow. I thought this was a voluntary club based on harmony, peace, good neighborliness, keeping everyone together. Uh, that, that's what I thought it was all about. But now it's <laughs> oh, we need a bit of stick you seem to be uh, in order to keep the club to, to, to get <laughs> together. It was a glimpse of the brittle talks that would follow Brexit, reason to stay in.